Hey guys and girls, in today's video we're going to talk about adjusting iron sights. And the principles we'll cover will pertain to both your handguns as well as your rifles, like this beautiful Winchester model 1892 in 357 Magnum. And this guy has a replacement rear sight. It's a marble arms bullseye. But the first thing I've got to do is to put some shots down range and see where we're hitting. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll spend some time at the range, and every now and then we'll reconvene out in my shop back in Houston, or here at the farm in Louisiana, where I'll build some fun projects, and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. And uh, yes, we are going to talk about sight adjustment. It can be confusing to uh, the uninitiated, and depending on how I'm thinking, it can be confusing to me as well. But we're going to talk about it, and hopefully at the end of the day, you're going to feel comfortable adjusting your sights to get your point of impact where you want it. Well, I got a nice tight group there, three shots at 25 yards. And uh, they're obviously, I was aiming at the middle of the target, and uh, those, those uh, shots are high and to the right by a little bit. And so we need to get things adjusted. But here's a question for you. Where do I really want my point of impact to be? And if I'm only going to be shooting steel at 25 yards, then I would like my point of impact to be right in the middle. But that's not the case with this 357 Magnum carbine. I'm going to be wanting it to aim a little bit high. And why is that? Well, I'm going to let this other guy talk to you about that. Well, if there was ever a time to reconvene out in my shop back in Houston, it would have been this one because the shop is right out there. And... Um, and through the magic of editing, I am here in Houston, and I did put together a little fixture out there to show you how to adjust your sights. And we're gonna look at that right now as I do a flyover of that, um, of that fixture. And the idea is to, um, to show you the, the sight picture with one rod, and that's the little blue uh, one, -eighth inch, one eighth inch diameter rod that, you're, that you see on top. And then there is the, um, the 45 caliber rod sticking out of the barrel that represents the point of impact. And so what we'll do now is we'll get set up with an additional camera here and looking down uh, from the shooter's perspective, I'll uh, make some adjustments there and you'll be able to see clearly what direction you need to move your sights um, if whether you're shooting right of where you would like to be or to the left, I'll show you how to do that adjustment. And uh, then we're going to talk about the 0.8 inches. Why did, why did we decide to go 0.8 inches high at 100 yards? And so I'll talk about that and I'll introduce you to the Hornady Ballistics Calculator, just a real quick flyover. And it'll show how we came up with that. And so depending on what kind of firearm you're shooting, you'll need to, uh, you'll need to put in your own data. But, uh, but anyway, right now, let me get this camera reset up so I can give you that bird's eye view of the, of the SIG 1911 that we're going to use to demonstrate this side adjustment. Okay, there's our shooter's eye. The blue rod represents the sight picture. It goes right across the top of the rear sight right across the top of the front sight and and it is right now looking at the center line the, the vertical center line that I've demonstrated or that I've drawn and then our 45 caliber rod represents the point of impact now I can't bring the this blue rod and this uh, point of impact rod together vertically and so we'll have to use our imagination but the way I've got it set up I've got my rear sight loosened and so I'm able to slide that left and right. 
Okay, now that we've got now that you've got the picture, um, I'm going to adjust, and I've got a this other camera here that's going to look closely down on the on the in line, and you can you can see that now. Um, but I'm going to adjust the sight out of alignment, and then I'm going to readjust the point of impact, or I'm going to readjust the fixture so that the sight picture is looking right at the vertical line. And so now, and so now we can see that the shooter's eye, which is here, you can't see it in this picture, but the shooter's eye, and this is extremely exaggerated, of course, because we're very close up, but the shooter's eye is looking at the target, which is the vertical line, but the point of impact is way off here to the left. And so in order to get the sight picture and the, and the point of impact aligned, because we are point of impact is to the left, or you need to move your rear sight in the same direction you move your point of impact. And so I'll move this back to center, moving the rear sight to the right. And now our point of impact moves to the right. So now our sight is lined up, and so is our point of impact. So let me demonstrate that from the other direction. And I will bias this. We're gonna make an extreme example here. I'm gonna re re-aim the firearm at the vertical black line. And now you can tell that the point of impact is way to the right. And so we need to correct, we need to move the point of impact to the left. In order to do that, I need to move the rear sight to the left. And so here we go. We're gonna move the rear sight to the left. And then when we re-aim, then our point of impact and our sight picture is even with the black line. But now let's take a look at the rear elevator on the 1892. And you can see here is the elevator right here. In fact, let me just take it out. Here is the elevator on the 1892 and different Rear sights are going to have different elevators, but they're all going to have the same stepped ramp like this. And so let me get this guy back in. And the condition we have right now is we have the rear sight is high, which means that our point of impact on target was too high. As you remember, it was about three inches too high. And so in order to bring that down, we're going to have to move the elevator forward to get this part onto a lower step. And so that's what we're going to try to show later in the video. And it just doesn't show up quite as well as I would like. So I'm going to show you right here. And so now, there we go. And so now, I've got the, ele the rear sight is resting on a lower part of the elevator. So we have lowered the rear sight, which means that our group is going to go lower as well. Same principle as we had with the left to right. All right, I mentioned that 0.8 inches, 0.8 inches high at, at um, 25 yards would equate to, point, uh, to zero, in other words, center of target at 100 yards. And how did I come up with that number? Well, I used the Hornady Ballistics calculator. And that's just, you can find it at hornady.com, or I'll actually put a link in the description for the Hornady Ballistics Calculator. Now, one of the numbers that you have to know in order to use that calculator is the dif distance from the center line of the bore of your rifle or pistol to the top of the front sight or to the center of your scope. If you're using the scope, you have to know what that number is because it can have a huge impact on the calculation. And so I pop up a little insert here and you can tell that I came up with 0.7 inches and that's a pretty, pretty good number, plus or minus probably 20 thousandths. And unfortunately, when I did the original calculation, I came up with 0.8 inches. And so the original calculation I did that came up with 0.8 inches high and the 0.8 and 0.8 have nothing to do with each other. But the original calculation that came up with 0.8 inches high at 100 yards uh, was off 
um, because of my, my input. Garbage in, garbage out, I think they say. And so I put a little garbage in, but ultimately it didn't have any impact in our downrange results. And you'll see why here in just a few minutes. But in order to use the calculator, I'm just going to go real quick through the data because you have to pop some numbers in. And at the top, and I'll sort of circle these as I talk about them, the ballistic coefficient, 1.17, uh, that came from the Hornady website for the Hornady 158 grain XTP. And then I arbitrarily put in 150 yards because I was short, shooting, short, shooting short distance. I didn't need much more than that. Now we get to the site height. That's the third one in the left column. And, and you can see that I calculated 0.7 inches. And then the velocity going to the next column, 1,700 feet per second, that came from Big Orange, the lab radar. And the interval, that's how often I want, want the calculator to record velocity and trajectory data. I set that at 25 yards. Moving over one more column, the weight of that XTP bullet was 158 grains. The drag function, you know, when you're looking at ballistic coefficients, you can either use G1 or G7 numbers. The G1 numbers are more than adequate for the kind of shooting that we do on this channel. And so, I, so you select either one, one of the other. And that comes from the ballistic coefficient that you, whatever you get that from, is going to tell you whether that's a G1 number or a G7 number. And so you just put that appropriate uh, designation in that drag function. And then the zero range, we wanted to be zero at 100 yards. And so looking at the ballistics results, um, if you go down to 100 yards, move over, you can see underneath the trajectory column, you can see that we're, we should be zero at 100 yards. But looking at the 20, 25 yard range, we would be 0.9 inches high. That should have been our goal. But but you will see that I was higher than that and I left it there and we were still, well, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story. I'll let you, uh, I'll let you watch the rest of the video because it's interesting and it leaves us with a little bit more work to do. But anyway, hope that was a real rush through the Hornady Ballistics Calculator. But now let's get back to that guy. He was cold in Northwest Louisiana and we're in a neck gator and, and I'm almost sweating here in the grand room. So um, back in Houston. And let's get back and see how the rest of that, that outing worked out. Okay, I appreciate his input and, uh, and it tells us that we need to move our rear sight because we're high and right, we need to move our rear sight down and left because you always wanna move your rear sight in the direction that you need your group to move. And so the easy one for the 1880s, uh, for the 1892, and really for all rifles with uh, iron sights, the easy one is the elevation adjustment. So let me show you that real quick. And we've got our rear sight, and it doesn't matter whether it's a semi-buckhorn or any other style. Uh, you've got an elevator here. And so what I need to do is to lift up on the rear sight, take some pressure off of the elevator, and then it, because it has steps that get lower and lower, I want to push this forward. And... We'll push it forward to about right, about right there. And we'll see if that gets us where we need to be. And now let's do the hard one, which is moving that rear sight to the left. Okay, I had to get reset up for this guy. But what we have to do to move this rear sight to the left, it's actually in this dovetail right here and some of the dovetails on your rifles are going to be really tight and some won't be quite so bad. This one's pretty tight and so I'm going to have to use a brass punch and a hammer to get that guy to move over and we do need to move it to the left from the shooter's perspective. And so I've got it right here and I'm just going to tap on it, see if I can feel it move It did move. Well, I'll tell you what, let's shoot it now and see if it's, um, if our elevation and our, if our elevation and our windage adjustment was right. So all we can do now is just shoot it again. Okay, we've made our adjustments. Now let's shoot at that uh, 25 yard target, right? 
right about there and um, and I'm going to pop up the target uh, the target cam that we introduced last week and so you'll get to see the shots fall before I will Okay, well you guys have already seen what I what I can't see from here, so I'm going to go down there and we'll check out our point of impact and see if it's where we want it to be. Well, the center of that group is it's just off to the left, left to right, but but uh, but I had to adjust that rear sight a second time to uh, get it because I moved it too far, and so I tapped to get it back on track, and uh, I'm going to call that good enough for right now, anyway. And we are centered at about an inch, about an inch and a half high. Now we wanted to be at 0.8 inches to be spot on at 100 yards, but I'm going to leave that there. Now let's go shoot that 100 yard steel and see where it falls on the 100 yard steel. Okay, well that wasn't too bad. It was a little bit high, like I said. Let's see where. Let's see if we can. Uh, Let's see where we fall on the 100 yard steel, which is right at the end of my barrel, right about there. And by the way, and by the way, I um, I love shooting offhand, but for an exercise like this, where we're trying to get things adjusted for all future use, uh, it's really best to find some kind of stable rest. And uh, so that's why I'm doing all my shooting from the bench and uh, using a very stable platform. So let's see what happens. Well, I heard three dings, but I don't know where they fell. Let's go down there and talk about it. Well, you can tell we're just a little bit, we're just a little bit low right there on our group. I needed it to be about right there. And uh, we'll do some more investigating and understand why the bullet drop was a little bit more than we expected. But I want to say thanks for joining me. And I've got six more rounds. It's the remaining batch of that hand loads that I put together just for this video. And I used um, Starline Brass, 357 Magnum, of course. And on top of that was Hornady XTP, 158 grain bullets. And so I'm going to send the last six rounds. It took 50 rounds to do this video. That's just the way it works in YouTube is all I got to say. But anyway, I'm going to put the other six rounds right down there on the next steel target.
discuss in the next video, guys and gals.